Right on back, we had a little interruption there. The wind picked up really strong. The helmsman needed some help, so we had to run and help him. Okay, so when we left, we were trying to figure out this arc length from the boat to Hawaii. We recognized that that's equal to the number of degrees from here to the center of the Earth to, to Hawaii. So if we can just figure out the number of degrees there, we're done. Now, the reason why I gave this to you as the practice to see whether or not you can handle it is because doing this is exactly the same as doing this. Well, not quite exactly, a few minor differences, but they are really minor. What we've got here is we have a triangle here. If we take the boat and draw a line from the North Pole to the boat and from the North Pole to Hawaii, we have a triangle. Solving this triangle is almost exactly the same as solving this triangle. If we know how long this side is and this side is, and if we know what this angle is here, we can figure out the arc length that we're after. Now we do know how long this side is, because we said that our boat, our boat's latitude was 30 degrees. So it means from the equator to our boat is 30 degrees. Now from here to here is 90, so if this is 30 here, that means this side length here must be 60 degrees. So we know that side. Same thing with Hawaii. We said that Hawaii was 21 degrees. So that means this side right here must be 90 minus 21. So that's 69 degrees. Okay, so this side is 60. This side is 69. Now, if we can just figure out what this angle is here, we're in business. Okay, well this angle is the difference between our, our longitudes. Okay, Hawaii's longitude was 158. Our longitude was 135. The difference there is 23 degrees. So this angle right here is 23 degrees. Okay, it doesn't show up there, but it's 23. What I'll do is I'll put this uh, on a separate diagram for you on the website. So what we have is a spherical triangle, just like we had here. So we can use the law of cosines in order to solve it. Except, now here's, here's the part that, that I didn't expect you to know ahead of time. This law of cosines only works if the triangles are drawn on a flat piece of paper, the way that Euclid originally designed them. Way back in, I don't know how many thousands of years ago, the, the guy that set up all of the geometry that you studied, his name was Euclid, and so this is Euclidean geometry. Well, this triangle right here, this triangle is not drawn on a flat surface. So this is not the Euclidean triangle. We call it non-Euclidean. So the law of cosines that we had before needs to be modified. And so the, the, the new law of cosines that we have to use in this case is cos... Oh, my pen is completely dying here. Let's try this one. Okay, so the cosine of C, instead of C squared, it's cosine of C, equals cosine of A times the cosine of B. So you can see it's similar. Instead of A squared, it's cosine of A. Instead of B squared, it's cosine of B. Now the correction term here, instead of this, is going to be plus the sine of A sine, that's a sine of B, times the cosine a big C. Now, I don't expect you to be able to read this, so I'll put it up. I'll put it up on the website right here. So this is the law of cosines that we're going to use, but we're going to use it exactly the same way that we did here. If we know, if we know how long side A is, which is 60, we know how long side B is, which is 69, and we know the angle in between here. So that's C is the angle in between. We can then solve for C just like we did before. So I need you to do that. Now, like I said in the intro, I don't expect that you got 100% of what I just said. So don't worry about it. I, on the website, I will, I will write it all out. I'll put some examples there on the website. So read through that, then come back, watch this video a second time, go back and work through it a second time, and then you'll get it. Okay? So get to it. That's your assignment. Thanks.